This is the JWN Podcast. I'm your host, Joseph Neistead. And to- no, all right, so this is Brian. Uh, hey, um, nice. Thank, thanks for the intro, Brian. You do a good impersonation of me. You know, I think it's funny that um, that's that's my brother-in-law, Brian. And I think it's extremely funny that I get a lot of feedback from her family and her friends. And I don't think my wife has ever listened to an episode of this podcast. It's just, I don't know. She, I guess she hears enough of my BS every day. She does not need to hear it, like playing in the speakers of her car. But last night was hysterical because uh, we're sitting there and she gets a message from one of her clients. Uh, and she just said, what does this message mean? I, I hope the puke made it to the photo. <laughs> if you're listening to the podcast last week, I talked about our Christmas uh, picture that we took in downtown Charleston where we were right next to a dumpster. And uh, while we were taking the picture, we discovered that there was a giant pile of puke right in front of the dumpster, just feet away from where we were taking our picture. Anyway, I had to explain to my wife that story, and I just thought it was funny. I, I almost feel like we should conspire. I, uh, you know, now that I know for a fact that she does not listen to this podcast at all, maybe all you people in her family and friends that do listen, give me some ideas for a Christmas gift for her. Because, I mean, I, I got her stuff she wanted, but that's lame, you know? Like, it's one thing to get her the stuff she wanted, but I, I got to come up with an idea of, of at least something that's thoughtful, right? I know I complained about it last week, but I, I really do need to come up with a, a better idea than just getting her what she asked for, because then that's just kind of like, eh, oh, here's the thing you could have just bought yourself. Ah, So people who listen that know my wife, give me some, shoot me some ideas, please. Just ask her. Like, what would be a good idea of a Christmas gift? What would be something that would like you wouldn't expect? Ask her and then report back to me. That would be very helpful. I would be very, very, very excited if you did that. All right. So, man, what a, what, a, what a, I mean, it's been a good week. Uh, I'm, I'm happy. Are you happy? How are you doing? I mean, I signed up for another in-person race and I'm doing it on, on, on Saturday, like, this this Saturday, <laughs> I did the same race last year. It's a trail race. It's it's a it's an ultra marathon or a half ultra marathon. And obviously, uh, well, I shouldn't say obviously. You don't know me, but I signed up for the half, which is twenty five k, which is still a lot. It's fifteen miles, basically, roughly. And uh, yeah, that's that's gonna be fun. So. <laughs> I'm doing that on Saturday morning, and I just got an email right before I started recording this from the race organi- organizer, and it just, it's a very short email. I'll read it to you right now. I wanted to remind everyone that it's deer season in the forest. Please wear bright colors and no deer antlers. Thanks. <laughs> That's, I, And I do remember last year running this race and kind of being alarmed that I heard I heard gunshots while we were running and I'm like, oh, this is fantastic. But, you know, that's that's kind of the danger. You, you I guess it's weird. Anyway, I also got an email from Guided by Voices that um, their new their newest, their third album of the year, their their latest album got delayed in, in the uh, vinyl pressing. So they they emailed the record to me. <laughs> you know, well, to anyone who pre-ordered it. And uh, so I'm excited to listen to it, but I got to record this podcast first. So we're going to get through this. I'm not going to rush it. I'm going to take my time. I'm totally not going to try to get to the end of this podcast to listen to that new Guided by Voices record. Speaking of Guided by Voices, people who use Spotify uh, this week got notified that their year-end wrap-up is uh, ready for them to check out all of the music that they listen to. So if you are a Spotify user, then you got you can check out like all the top five artists that you listen to and the top five songs, and it tells you how many minutes you've listened to music. It'll tell you the genres. And uh, well, briefly, I'm gonna I got two points to make on this uh, because you know 
it's it, it it this came out on December first. Like there's a whole month left. But let, oh, before I get to that, so my top artists of the year for 2020. Number one, guided by voices. By the way, they were my top artists for 2019 as well. It's hard for them not to be when they release three albums a year and you listen to them all. And yeah, they're gaming the system. I'm telling you. It's um, it's not a loss. It's 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 a win for me. Anyway, uh, number two, Run the Jewels. I love that record. <laughs> RTJ4 is just fantastic. Number three, this is not a surprise for me, The Beths. They are uh, a New Zealand band who's out touring right now, by the way, to crowds without masks on in New Zealand. You know why? Because New Zealand locked down hard at the beginning of this. And now they can live life like, like there's no pandemic. Gee, how nice would that be if everyone could cooperate and do the hard thing right at the start of this and like really take it seriously and be done with it? Imagine that. Number four was Phoebe Bridgers. <laughs> ah, you guys must think I'm a psychopath at this point. Number five, car seat headrest. They also had a new album. All of these bands have new albums out. So yeah, top artists make a lot of sense. Spotify provided to me as a podcaster some some information on how I did this year. Now, I started this podcast in June. And according to Spotify, their listeners um, span 33 countries. And that I dropped 38 episodes with 2,085 minutes of content. Which again... It's December, and as of now, I'm I'm on episode. This is this is episode forty-seven. So they're they're behind by quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, and, and if I look at my podcasting host provider, it's it the amount of countries that I have listened or download downloaded a an episode is is over forty. But that's still pretty cool. Like I, I enjoy these kind of numbers. It's fun to to think about you know, what you've spent your time doing (laughs) with your music listening. I love it. Um, My genres, though, uh, were pretty interesting. My number one genre was indie rock. Number two, rock. I mean, does it have to be separated? Uh, Number three, hip hop. Number four, soul. And number five, punk. I don't know. That's pretty cool. I, 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 I agree with that. So, I, I guess if I disagreed with it, it would mean that I don't agree with the fact that they're tracking my listening habits, which they clearly are. But that brings me back to like a lot of the music magazines and, and just anything that covers entertainment, they're all coming out with, I mean, as soon as December 1st hit, are coming out with their best of the year stuff. And I'm like, when did Christmas, I mean, not Christmas, I'm sorry, when did, when did December just not count (laughs) as a month anymore. Does it not count? I mean, there's 12 months. And for all of these best ofs, I mean, there's music coming out this month. Like Guided by Voices has a new record coming out this month. So for you to say best of without even being able to access the music that has even come out this year, all of the music that's come out this year, how, how can it be the best? What if the new Guided by Voices record that comes out this month is the greatest record ever created. Like, it's an instant classic. It's just beyond anyone's imagination. It, it just grabs the world by the heart and changes... It, it, it brings upon world peace and change in a positive way. And you've got Republicans and Democrats sleeping together. And, you know, it, it's uh, just just craziness. The, the world comes together. You know, that could happen. I hope it happens. <laughs> But, you know, who would know? Because all the lists are out saying that this is the best of this year. And even though there's a month left in this year. And I also kind of feel like, you know, I feel like it gets earlier and earlier every year. Maybe I'm just noticing it now or noticing it more. But it's kind of like, you know how Christmas used to start like right after Thanksgiving and now it's right after Halloween. And it feels like, okay, now after Thanksgiving, everyone's just done with the year. It's over. Here's the best of 2020. There's nothing else going to come out this year that's any good. (laughs) Okay. 
Did you uh, have fun on Thanksgiving? Did you, did you did you have a safe Thanksgiving? Was it was it? What, did you do something different? Did you make up a new tradition? Did you maybe entertain some people that have been in your kind of germ circle, and uh, in, in an effort to to feel like you're bonding with people and not alone on Thanksgiving? What did you do? We we kind of did the latter, you know. Uh, we didn't, I, I talked about this last week. We ended up having, so my daughter brought some friends over, which I was like, okay, well, all right. You know, I, I mean, I'm happy to see them any other time, but obviously you bring 20 year olds into a house with a bunch of adults uh, during a pandemic. We're all kind of like, hey, you know, kind of, that, 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 you know, that's the thing we don't want happening, but they've all had it. <laughs> so... They already had, all these kids had already had it. So they're not really uh, a threat to our health. I hope, you know, I I say that with some sort of understanding that maybe once you have it, you're probably not going to get it or spread it again. So that might not be true. We don't know for um, sure. We're just pretty sure, you know, at this point. So that's kind of, that's okay. I guess. Last week, I, um, I kind of, I, I got a little serious. I, I talked about, you know, dealing with death during the pandemic. And uh, this week I spent some time with a client of mine who uh, early on this year, he lost his wife. And I just kind of wanted to touch on it because it, it's just one of those makes you think type of situations. This is a man who has, you know, he's a captain of industry. He has everything that that the world has to offer. He had this beautiful estate in this beautiful area. If you don't know Charleston, uh, he, he had this beautiful house beachfront in Kiowa Island, which is an extremely exclusive private area. It's breathtaking. It, uh, Joe Biden actually spends, he goes on holiday in Kiowa pretty much every year. Um, and I only know this because back when Obama was president, when Joe Biden came to, to, to go on vacation, you know, the streets would shut down to, to make way for the vice president to get there safely. Anyway, uh, this guy had this beautiful estate. Um, just, it was just a breathtaking place. And, and I've known that, you know, him and his wife, I've known them for years, for at least a decade. Uh, I've been helping them out with stuff and, uh, and I was helping him move into a new place. He, He moved in, uh, into a house, a beautiful house downtown Charleston, historic downtown Charleston. Um, so this guy, you know, as far as monetary stuff is concerned, and just you know, success in that front, he has it all. But you know, he lost his wife, and uh, he he's not healed during this time. He, he lost his wife in April, and it's you know November now, and he has not been able to, to, to take many steps forward in his life. Uh, and it makes, it, it just makes you think about what people are going through, how people are dealing with this. Uh, I, I, I seriously cannot imagine losing someone like that in, at this time. But then I also thought about the fact that, you know, at the older we get as humans, You know, we have less and less close friends, most of us. We just kind of, by the time we get into our 60s and 70s and whatnot, we're, a lot of times, it's, it's, you know, our immediate family is, that's it. And if you lose your wife or your husband, and they're pretty much your entire world, like, what do you have left? And I, it's a scary thought. It's a scary thought because he obviously was just deeply in love with his wife and, and his whole world revolved around this person who's no longer in his life. And, and, uh, you know, when you put all of your emotional eggs in one basket and that basket, you know, goes away. Wow. Wow. So it really got me thinking this week about what's important to me. Uh, and then I, I kind of parlayed into like what's important in my artwork, in my photography. You know, I, 
I, I started to, because of all of this reflection going on, this, you know, end of year kind of, uh, mind space that I, that's, you know, that I'm occupying right now, I started looking back at my f- photographs this year and, and this really, I, I don't have a whole lot to be proud of personally. Uh, I have stuff I, I enjoy that I did professionally, but it's a lot of just professional work. It's not stuff that like I created, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? As far as having an intention and, and creating something uh, to, to, to speak to somebody, to tell a story. And, uh, you know, in, in thinking of this client's loss and, and, and what we have in life and, and, and taking inventory, I started thinking about like how important it, my, it, it, it's going to be going forward for me to, to have personal projects outside of work, outside of paid stuff. And to, to really have intention with them. You know, it's really easy in, in the world of photography. A lot of photographers that you will, well, not that you, I don't know what you look at, but a lot of photographers, when you get into photography that get popular are technically amazing. And the formula seems to be get pretty girl, put pretty girl in pretty location and make it look pretty. And uh, what's the story there though? What's the intention there? It's like, oh, you found a model, you hired a model or you had a friend that was a model and you um, took their picture in front of a place that's pretty at a, at sunset or something like that, or in a, a, you know, a foggy forest or whatever it is. And while that's all well and good, I, I, I'm just like, well, where's the intention? What, what is it that you're trying to say? Are you trying to say, Hey, look at this hot girl. I, I don't know. Or even guy. I mean, you can do it with male models as well, but it seems to be, there's a term in the world of photography called a uh, guy with a camera. <laughs> I believe it's just uh, shortened to GWC. And it's a stereotype of basically photographers who just want to take pictures of like scantily clad or nude women with their camera. And yeah, I don't, <laughs> I have no interest in that. Like who cares? It's, it, it's just, so you, you could do the same thing with taking a picture of a flower or something else, you know, you can take a technically good picture. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about uh, taking pictures where you're trying to say something or accomplish something. And I have some ideas and, and uh, you know, I, I definitely want to start pursuing that. So I might be reaching out to some of you guys in the future, if you're willing, uh, to participate in such a project, um, kind of put some feelers out there. Cause I I really do want to, to do some stuff that I'm proud of outside of work. But this year has been so, you can't really, it's been hard for me to do that kind of thing, to think in those terms. But I feel like, uh, my, my, my eyes have been opened up through this tragedy that people are going through. And yeah, time's ticking, man. Time is ticking. So, so I'm going to, I'll talk about that, you know, what my ideas are more as I start to really flush them out in my head uh, and, and maybe get some work done and it'll be exciting. So keep an eye out for that. So uh, did you pick up anything fun on uh, Black Friday or Cyber Monday or Giving Tuesday or no, Giving Tuesday was, yeah. And then there was Saturday was Small Business Saturday. Uh, did you did you uh, get annoyed like me at the Instagram al- algorithm, which shows you something two days after it happened? So like on Tuesday, I'll get all these posts that say, hey, here's my limited print release for you know, Cyber Monday or uh, on Sunday, I'll get a Black Friday thing. And it's just like, it's always a day late or, or, and I'm like, man, people, if you've got something that's time sensitive to promote, don't do it on Instagram. And if you're going to do it on Instagram, maybe just do it in your story or do a paid promotion for that day. And, and Instagram's going to hold it back. They won't show you. 
they won't show me your stuff until it's too late. And it's very frustrating. This world that we live in of algorithms has many flaws. And that one currently is driving me nuts. You know, um, there's been plenty of times when before this lockdown, when there would be a show going on and I'd see it the day after. Like, hey, come see this band play tonight at your favorite venue. And, you know, the day has already passed. And you're like, well, I would have loved to have gone and seen that band. But I can't now because I don't know how to time travel. I'm not Doctor Who. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's my, my PSA for people. Don't use Instagram to, to promote something on the day that it's happening. You know, if you're going to do that, do it like three days in advance and then maybe people will see it ahead of time or at least on the day. This morning I went for my my run as I, I get ready for uh, a marathon. <laughs> and now I guess this half ultra that I'm running on Saturday, but I'm training for a marathon in March and there's this pond in my neighborhood and it's 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 really pretty. Um, on the back side of the pond, there's these, you know, perfectly placed trees, uh, in this wooded area. And a few years, actually more than a few years ago, it's probably more than 10 years at this point. Um, the leaves changed right around this time and they were perfect. They, they were like picturesque. So much so that I went to the store and bought my daughter a dress and my son a nice shirt. And I put them in the dress and nice shirt. And I took a picture of them out by the, in, by the pond with that backdrop of these beautiful fall leaves, right? And ever since that year, it's never been the same. Like the leaves kind of start to change. And then next thing, they're just like dead. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like they're just... They, they might go to a, a subtle shade of, of a, a golden color and then they're just gray or, or off, you know. And, and right now they, they're, they're in that weird gray period where they're just, they're, or they're still green. The, the leaves don't know what to do down here. They haven't really, they're, they're falling all over the place, but it's kind of weird because it's like you look at the trees and, and they're not these bright golden colors you might see up north. They're still pretty green. In some places it's yellow and then they just go away <laughs> and they fall and then you just got lots of leaves everywhere. But I saw, I watched this YouTube video last night uh, of this guy, this photographer, Adam Gibbs, and he's up in the Canadian Rockies. And uh, this video is just gorgeous. I'll link it in the show um, just because it's such a beautiful location and it's, this lake is, is, is a glacial lake. So it's this beautiful color of blue and the leaves are just this really nice muted like reds orange and yellow and and he's got these beautiful trees that are just in the water and the light's amazing and he's you know this guy's having the time of his life with with another photographer a guy by the name of jeremy jackson and they're they're in like a kind of like uh winnebago type trailer thing or whatever. No, it was a pickup truck with an add-on. I don't know. They were camping at this campground and right at this campground, they had this beautiful landscape that they were fo photographing. And both the guys were just so happy because they said they have been photographing this park for 30 years and they had never seen it that beautiful before. It's never looked the way it, as perfect as it, as it did while they were there uh, this trip. And, uh, you know, and this morning when I'm, I'm thinking about that pond and I'm just like, maybe I'll never see it look like that again. Maybe that was just a freak of nature that like I had this beautiful scene at this pond. Uh, and, and luckily I captured it. Luckily I have a photo of this beautiful uh, pond uh, and, and foliage behind it with my kids at a, at a very special age. But yeah, I, I just thought about like, man, can, I can't imagine how fleeting something like that actually is. And uh, yeah, I'm not a landscape photographer, uh, so I don't scope out those things. But maybe uh, sometimes I see those videos and I see these guys that are just out camping and they're enjoying themselves for a week of just taking pictures and enjoying the scenery. And, and it really, I was like, man, I wish I could do that right now. <laughs> 
this would be the best time to do that. But alas, we can't. So instead, let's just talk about the news. Phoebe Bridgers. Oh no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> if you had, if you had, if you didn't listen to my lap to last week's solo show, the news was nothing but Phoebe Bridgers news because I got lazy and that's all I cared about talking about. So, yeah. But actually, you know what? There is Phoebe Bridgers news this week because the girl just keeps giving and giving and giving. Uh, this time, she actually teamed up with the uh, actress. Uh, Phoebe Waller-Bridge so Phoebe Bridgers and Phoebe Waller-Bridge came together and put out a music video for one of Phoebe Bridgers uh, songs and it's absolutely stunning the song is called Savior Complex and it stars Paul Mescal who's an Emmy nominated English uh, actor he's on Hulu's Normal People basically he's this like shaken and bloodied character and he stumbles across this dog who is adorable and the dog kind of just, you know, takes him on, you know, keeps popping up. He keeps trying to get rid of the dog and it keeps coming back to him. And it, it's just, you got to watch the video. It's pretty awesome. And uh, yeah. And oh, and Phoebe Bridgers also did another live performance this time for Jimmy Fallon of the song Savior Complex. And she recorded it at Los Angeles's uh, Magic Castle. And it's just it could have been the music video itself. It's so well done. I, again, she keeps giving. If you're not a fan of Phoebe Bridgers, you're missing out. All right, let's get to an actual story that's not Phoebe Bridgers related. On Thanksgiving, Johnny Flynn and Mark Marin put out a movie about David Bowie. And it's not a movie for everybody. Stardust is basically a very off-the-cuff kind of it's nothing like uh, the, the big biopic or uh rockumentary style picture uh, like bohemian rhapsody or uh the rocket man like those were big budget amazing documents of these artists lives and you know david bowie deserves something like that but this movie is nothing like that and i think it's kind of cool because of that it's not for everyone though and they didn't even the license to use any of David Bowie's songs in this movie. So it's a movie about David Bowie and David Bowie's estate didn't approve of the film or grant them uh, the rights to the music. And I, I understand kind of why they don't approve of the film because it portrays David Bowie early on in his career before America really took notice of him. And he's the, the, the premise of the movie is he's going on tour with uh, a publicist for his record label and Mark Maron plays that pu publicist and he doesn't even have a work visa so he can't perform so he's going on this like tour through America trying to like score interviews with you know Rolling Stone magazine and other places and uh, radio stations and things like that and it's an interesting look into you know a guy who was not full of confidence a guy who was not a rock star yet you know what i'm saying and it documents like things like the troubles with with his first wife well you know he's on this he's on this tour while she's pregnant you know he he's gone for months while she's pregnant and and it, of course you could see the the seeds of the end of that relationship through this it's just a really cool look at his uh his career and and how it could have gone wrong. So yeah, it's not a, a pleasant portrait and it's it's not a feel good movie at all. You know, it really kind of looks into the tortured soul at a time when when David Bowie's brother was uh was pretty much put into a, an asylum of some sort uh, of like a, a facility because he lost his mind and David Bowie was going through this at least in the film, he's going through a period of, of doubting whether or not he is sane, you know? And, and if you listen to the album that came out at the time of this movie, which was um, his second record, it, I mean, the sanity is, is a huge theme. And uh, yeah, and the movie's called Stardust. So if you're a David Bowie fan, check it out. If you're kind of a mild David Bowie fan, maybe skip this one. But I, I loved it. Moving along. There were more than 2.5 miles 
of cliff paintings found hidden in the Amazon rainforest recently. Researchers uncovered thousands of drawings from an Ice Age tribe hidden deep in the Amazon rainforest, and these drawings are spread across three rocky shelters in Colombia. Scientists say they were first painted between 12,600 and 11,800 years ago. The largest shelter alone, Serra Azul, has drawings covering more than two and a half miles of its surface. The images show some of South America's earliest inhabitants and their interactions with Ice Age animals, including giant sloths, ancient llamas, and Ice Age horses. Some drawings even depict what experts think are mastodon hunts. Many of the images show unusual levels of detail for such ancient art, according to Jose Eriate, a professor of archaeology at the University of Exeter and a leader of the team that made the discovery. The Ice Age horse had a wild, heavy face, Iriate said. It's so detailed, we can even see the horse's hair. It's fascinating. The paintings are so vast and numerous that they'll likely take many years to study fully. Plus, Jason Lenny Chaparro Cardenas, an anthropologist at the National University of Columbia and a member of the research team, said that the cliffs in the region had not fully yet been explored. There are many things and moments of excitement and amazement Shaparo Cardenas said. He added that most of the images revolved around a common theme, the majesty of the nature that surrounded them and with which they interacted with in their daily lives. The team first began studying the region in 2014, two years before the revolutionary armed forces of Colombia struck a peace treaty with Colombia's government. The Serrano La Lendosa region falls under FARC territory and entering safely still requires careful negotiations with the guerrilla group. The region also has many natural hazards. Poisonous snakes and caimans inhabit the area, which is an hour-long journey from the nearest town. At one point, a large venomous bushmaster snake blocked the research team's path. They had to walk around it knowing that they were far from any hospital. An archaeologist who worked on the team said, you're in the middle of nowhere, but it's 100% worth it. Man, that's cool, man. <laughs> Can you imagine finding paintings on a wall depicting life from like 12,000 years ago? You think about 12,000 years from now, what will we leave behind? What will they have? Will someone find like a phone and see like someone's Snapchat and just be like, well, I guess they were into shaking their butts in strange fashions rapidly. I don't know. All right, folks, I think that about wraps it up. Listen, my podcast guest for Monday is amazing. He's simply amazing. Uh, he's a soul singer here in Charleston. He's 78 years old. God's full of life and energy. It's a fun, fun interview. Uh, after we were done recording the interview, we kept talking. At, I mean, there's a story he told me afterwards about a band that he was playing with at one point, and they're on tour, and he decided, hey, I want to... I want to go home for Christmas and see my family. And the, the guy who fronted the band pulled a gun on him and said, no, you can't leave. Like, that's the kind of stuff that this guy has been through. So, I, I, I mean, I really hope you, you check out that episode. That'll come out on Monday. Otherwise, have a great weekend. Stay safe. Peace. Peace.